Hi, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Delhi Haro family. Good morning to you wherever you are. Good afternoon if you're looking at this recording. I got a question for you, Sorel. Mm, uh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Sorel, do you know why... Um, <laughs> do you know where, sorry, do you know where the cows go on Friday nights? Hmm. I don't know, Gio. They go to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's appropriate for Halloween. You know, they could go to the movie. <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. I have another one, another terrible one. Okay. Do you know how to make an octopus laugh? Oh, you tickle it. With ten tickles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. The first one was that, the second one was work. <laughs> 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 it never fails, Gio. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Atlanta. Good morning, Southeast, East Coast, West Coast, wherever you are. Good morning, Maritza, Virtue, Celero 5G. Good morning, Liz, Sorrel. Good morning, wherever you are. It is not CC. <laughs> it is not a small thing that you're here. And as we always like to say, it is not a small thing you woke up this morning. It is truly not a small thing. It's, you know, the, the thing about this brain that we have, it just, it doesn't appreciate the opportunity of waking up every morning. Mm -hmm. It's an intentional kind of thinking. And I hope we get to inspire you to do that every morning because we say here, the way you start your day is the way you live the rest of the day. And the way you, that you live each day gives you the rest of your life. Today, we have a phenomenal conversation. Thank you, Sorrel, for dancing with me in this phenomenal conversation. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create your dream team and maximize their talent. However, before we do that and we go into that conversation, we want to anchor ourselves to this one really critical aspect of being a powerful human being and we do it every morning so if you're looking to be a powerful human being in life you want to pay attention to what we're going to create here Sorel, what time is it jill let me look my fancy watch tells me the time is now now yes it can't escape you Stand the man. Where are you? Yes, sir, Gio. I'm right here. I'm right here, right now. Right here, <laughs> right now. Stacy, great to see you. How What's are going you? on? <clears throat> um, what, did, what did you ask me? How are you, Stacy? How am I? I am how I say I am. <clears throat> That's every day, right? I am. <clears throat> I am ready for this very busy day that is ahead of me. And you get to say that. Ready. <laughs> you get to say there's something really profound about this, Sorel. I am here. The time is now. And the way I am is a function of whatever I say, whatever comes out of my mouth. The way that you are is a function of what you say. It's critical. It's critical to discover that your emotions, how you feel, is a function of what you say, not the other way around. Mm. All right, very good. Try it out. <laughs> Try it out. Try it on. Sorrel, <laughs> one thing you're grateful for, Sorrel. I am grateful for this conversation, brother. You know, it's, it's like discovering for real, not like a mantra, not like something we say every morning, but that discovering that there's power in being here right now 
and using my mouth to create my life. To create who I am. Yeah. Yes, yes. So today we're going to talk about it every Friday, right? Remember, Monday we talk about money, right? Money is critical. We want you to have money. Make a lot of it, you know? On Tuesday we talk about health, health and wellness. Money alone is not very powerful. You got to have your health. And health alone without appetizers and vacations is not that cool. So we want you to have your health. On Wednesday, we talk about relationships. Relationships are really critical. Your entire life is around a relationship. Everything that you do is around relationships. You notice, notice everything that your life is about is a function of a relationship with another human being. As, you know, absent of really being curious on what are the ways to best grow a relationship, how to communicate. Your life is, with, whether you have money and whether you have health, your life is not... It's not very inspiring if your relationships are not strong. On Thursdays, we talk about spirituality. And I don't know if you have missed this. This whole entire week has been phenomenal. You, you got to go back. Magical. If you haven't heard any of the, the episodes <laughs> this week, they have every week they're incredible. I don't know how this happens, but every morning we have unbelievable conversations that you want to start your day with. Yesterday was one of them. And today, on Fridays, we talk about business and leadership. And a little bit of everything. Every now and then we bring a little bit of a spice to all of it. But mostly it's on leadership and business, right? And today I'm going to be concentrating, Sorel, on how to create your dream team, how to create a really nice team for yourself. And it doesn't mean a large team. We just mean your team, the team, your dream team, and maximize their talent. And Sorel and I have this particular experience that Sorel has been working in leadership development for how long Sorel you have been like on the court really working on this on the court since 2009 Joe. since 2009 this is uh 2009 19 10 13 years on the court right and then there is his, his life experience but really on the court training thousands of people on how to reinvent themselves so that they can have tools to lead themselves better and lead others, right? And I have been on the court probably since 2012, uh, on the court with companies, with organizations in three continents. And at this point, we have the privilege to work with one of the largest companies in the planet, among the largest companies in the planet, to work with the United Nations, Sorrel works in Haiti. It's not like, we're not trying to say we're experts in leadership, but we're not strangers to the possibility of that. So whatever we're going to create today, it's really simple, really simple. And your job <clears throat> is to discover the profoundness of that. What we say is simple, so it's easy to dismiss. It's easy to see it as another simple conversation, but there's nothing simple about this. There's a profoundness to what we're going to be pointing to. The first one I want to tell, I want to, you know, the first thing I want to say is that talking about leadership is like talking about chocolate. No amount of talking about leadership will leave you with a new paradigm in being a leader. You got to be on the court. You've got to allow yourself to be on the court and discover your own emotions, right? It's like chocolate. And, you know, talking a lot about chocolate doesn't really leave you with the experience of eating chocolate, right? There's something that you've got to see about that, right? However, we're going to talk about leadership in a way today that leaves you with a, hopefully with an access, hopefully with a door to actually be on the court of your leadership. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I want you to think about when you, when you think about leadership, you have a lot of opinions and you have a lot of experiences and everything that you know about leadership, I want you to just put it on the side, not dismiss it, because we're not going to tell you something that is true and you got to use it. Otherwise, you're doomed as a leader. No, I just want you to put it on the side and allow to hear everything we're going to say in its own world. And then you use it and abuse it or you leave it if it works for you. Okay, so here it is. Sorrel, one of the things that you and I have discovered is that in the world of leadership, however you are works, however you are works, 
When we are in group sessions, whether it's 10, 20, 100, 300, or 500, right? whenever we're in group sessions, we like to ask people, do you know, uh, no, what is one characteristic that you know that a leader cannot have? What is one characteristic that you know that a leader cannot have? And people say a bunch of, a bunch of things. One of the ones that people say is, you know, or it's a common denominator, is, you know, a leader cannot be dishonest. Another one is that, you know, a leader has to listen. A leader has to listen, right? And then imagine everything else on the planet that people say. And then we ask them, do you know a leader who is dishonest? And by God, they can point to Thousands of them. <laughs> yes. Or where we or we ask them, do you know a leader who cheats? And you can point to one. A leader that lies. Absolutely. A leader that doesn't have energy. Absolutely. So however you are, however you are, this conversation can apply to you. It's like a playground. Leadership is like a playground. You know, when you're in school, there's a playground. It's available for everybody. All the children can play. However you are, tall, small, you know, with experience, without experience, with education, without education, right? Someone who cheats, someone who lies. Leadership is for everybody. Really, it truly is. Now, not everybody's interested in playing in that playground, but it is for everyone. Make sense? All right. So having said that, however you are, works for you in the context of being a leader. Now, some things make you effective leader and some things don't. So we're going to talk about a little bit of what gives you the door of effectiveness as a leader. Now, one of the things that have really worked for me, Sorrel, and, and that I've noticed for myself is that, or not that I've noticed, something I've discovered, and it's really useful, is that whatever your idea is, that you have that you want to get other people around. Whatever your game is, whatever your, your business you're in, however complicated or however simple it is, there are people who would love to play with you out there. How You know, they really would love to play your game, however you are. They want to play. And, you know, sometimes I have clients that think, well, you know, I'm really unorganized. And I, so I don't want to grow my business because I'm really disorganized. And, and I don't want to bring somebody else on the team because they're going to see how much of a flaw I am. There are someone who wants to work with a flaw human being. They love organizing things. They love helping people get organized. Right. Or, you know, I just like I'm too loud and I scream. And some people don't care for that. It doesn't mean you want to just. But some people don't really take that personal. So whatever idea you have that you want to grow, and you know that creating a team will help to grow that idea, then you've got to allow yourself to begin to share what idea is that you care about. You want to begin to share it. Share it with the community you're in right that however small your community is you want to begin to share it this is what i want to create this is what i need help with now some people that you share it with will point to a different person some people already want to raise their hand and they want to say i want to play with you and some people would say no i want to introduce you to somebody else some other people will have the skills to actually support you in your growth. And some other people will be your moral support. You can do it. Don't give up on yourself. However that is, depending on the stage that you're in, you want to allow yourself to bring awareness to your surrounding of what it is that you care about. Awareness. There is no, there's no power in you becoming a secret agent for what you love. 
you know, like a double of seven of what you're passionate about, a secret agent. There is no power that uh, there. There's no power in you hiding what you love. A lot of people have heard, don't share your ideas the, until they come to fruition because somebody is going to want to steal it or somebody, let them steal it. Let them steal it. It's just not, whenever somebody sell, says something like that, it is not grounded on their experience. It is grounded on what they heard other people say. People don't just run away with ideas. You have to create an entire team. You have to create, you have to have a passion. You have so many things. And if it is true that somebody hears your idea and runs with it, then you just created your best partner. Because you're, if you're really passionate about what you are passionate about, and you have all, you have, you're investing everything that you are in that, and somebody else is taking it on. Well, now somebody's your competition, your healthy competition, and now you got a partner. If you're just kind of wobbly about it, then somebody else runs with it, then you're just going to go complain about it and write an article, right? So share, share what you're about. As you're sharing what you're about, people come. Some have skills and some don't. At the beginning, let people come in. Later, as you're building your team, then yes, you only want to have the people who have skills. What do I mean by that? If you are, if your game is basketball, right? That's your game. This is a symbol. If, you're, if your game, your business is being in the game of basketball. Well, you don't really want to recruit baseball players. You don't really want to recruit soccer players. You don't want to recruit people who don't have experience in basketball. That's true. At the beginning, let, you know, let the soccer players come in. But as you start getting better and resources and time become really important to you, then you start listening for, well, who has experience in basketball? Who has experience in what I do? That will save you time, money, effort, et cetera, right? That comes with the being in the field for a while. But if you haven't been in the field for a while, let the supporters come in. Let the basketball players, the soccer players, let people come in so that you can grow in your leadership. Now, when the team is being built, what is your job? This is very important. You're going to forget this, but this is critical. This is really critical. Your job is to give language to your passion. You've got to frame what it is, why it is that you love this stuff. You got to frame it. Why is that you love it? Why is that you're doing this? Why? What's the purpose? But you got to frame it, not just live it. You got to say it and put it in a document so that the, your team begins to see it as well. And they can identify with your why. You see, your why is very selfless in many ways. Now, the language needs to be tweaked so that you don't say something like, well, the reason why I'm doing this business is so that I put my own children into college. Yeah, that's a very, you know, individual kind of goal. However, if you say your my why is to help people take their children to college, including mine. Now, that includes all of it. Does that make sense? Your why needs to be shared with your team on a regular basis so that now they see your why as their why, so that they can own it. Absent of doing that, it's only you who has the power. Only you have the emotional connection to what you do. And other people have other reasons to be with you, but not with an emotional power. So your why is critical. You know, there's a book by, uh, what's his name? Forgot his name. He has a TED I'm Talk. Senec. Senec, yes. He says, starts with the why. You want to dive in into that book? Why? It's so critical to start with the why. All right. Now, the last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to say it in two minutes. This is going to be really simple, but it's profound. The last thing I'm going to say. After you create that why, and more than likely you have goals for your business, for your game, you have goals. You want to make that big goal into smaller goals. Make the big goal, this is how you maximize the talent of your team. 
Make your big goal into smaller goals. And then give those small goals a deadline. Small goals. Give your small goals a deadline. And your team needs to know the deadline. Not the deadline for the big goal. No, the deadline for the small goals. So now you have a team around small goals with a deadline. And then you as a leader, you exercise leadership and you say, if the small goal is not met, then something. Something that tells people you've got to give yourself, you got to give everything you got to that small goal. If the small goal is not met, our children don't eat or something. You get the point, right? Small goals are the ones that create, that maximize the talent of your team. Small goals, not large goals, small goals. Depending on your business, they look differently. All right, so that's what I wanted to say, Sorel. Any thoughts, any questions? Raise your hand, any comments? Awesome, awesome, Joe. I want to take the opportunity to sort of encapsulate everything maybe in two sentences to, to express my gratitude for what you're saying, right? Uh, it goes like this. Everybody, whichever way you are right now, works. The people around you, whichever way they are, works. So what gives? If you're passionate about something, take that something and express it in the world. And by expressing it, you get to practice developing your own passion and your own emotional connection to it. And as you do that, you'll discover that, my God, that stuff is contagious. Others begin to develop an emotional connection to it. Not everybody, just the ones who gravitate to it. So that's why it's so critical to express it. That's how you identify the ones who will gravitate. And naturally, they are your team members. And then you create small goals inside of that big goals, and you let the people who have the talent to address one or the other small goals run with it inside of their own passion that they developed because you took the time to express your passion. And as, as the leader, your only job, actually your primary job, is to continually be expressing that passion to keep others coming to it and emotionally connecting to it. And your other job is to continually creating small goals connected to a big vision that people get to give their lives to. Gio, did I catch it? Better than I did. Awesome. <laughs> That's the game we get to play as business owners. And you know, you may think that this only applies in business. This applies to everything you're up to in life. By golly, you go to a bar and you want to get that person to go with you? Well, you better express some passion <laughs> and set a small goal, which might be the next date. <laughs> yes. So comments, questions, I'd love to hear you. Gio would love to hear you. Yes, as, as, any, as, as people raise their hands, right, and make a comment or a question. One of the one of the biggest struggles that I see with uh, with small business owners or medium sized business owners is their their wanting to um, keep everybody happy. You know, like happy happiness is a very important aspect, and they don't create deadlines for the small goals. And so they say things like, uh, "When you get a chance." Or let me know when this can be get done, when you can get this done. Let me know when that happens. Or things like that, that are not date oriented. And there's something, a very critical aspect, very important aspect is that what maximizes the talent of your team are the dates around the small goals. The dates, the dates. You've got to allow yourself, allow yourself to master the, the courage to set a date for everything that you're up to by when this needs to get done and let people deal with the date. 
If they need to give you a counter offer, if they need to give you a different date, well, they give you a different date. But don't walk away from a conversation of a small goal without a date. That's detrimental to the business that you're growing. Yesenia. Good morning, Giovanni um, and Sorrell. Thank you so much for um, what you have just shared. This is the position that I feel like I'm in right now um, with a nonprofit that's about three years old. I had to accept whoever that came, <laughs> you know, so having the baseball, the football, the basketball players, whoever, you know, because I was just starting, but now I am seeing, you know, the more that I talk about it, I am attracting people who have the same, have similar visions and they can see how they can really be a part of what I'm doing. And before it was like, I was pulling teeth, you know, okay, I want you to look at this and see, you know, how does this connect to your life? And, you know, how do you want to move forward with this? Because it, it was becoming a drain trying to lead everyone and do everything. And so um, recently, I want to say within the last three or four months, um, I connected with someone and she's a volunteer and she's co-hosting with me now, but she has a very similar vision, you know, and I didn't look at it as she's my competition. I looked at it as, hey, we can work together. And now, you know, um, I'm in a state now that I feel drained. Because I've been going 110% so long. And so now whenever she, you know, she'll just call me out of the blue or, or text me and say, hey, I have this, you know, idea. And I'm like, oh, great. Can you, you know, lead this? And she's like, of course, sure. And it is a breath of fresh air when you find your community, the people who have similar visions, you know, and they can just take, you know, what you have and run with it and say, okay, all right, can you have this done by next Wednesday? And it's done, you know, but I do agree at first, yeah, you might have to take who you can get at first, you know, so that you don't wear yourself out. But the more that you do talk about it, you know what, you're going to start drawing those people that are part of your community. Community. And then it is like a breath of fresh air because they see the vision, you know, they see mm -hmm. the mission mm -hmm. and they can run forth with it and it encourages you. Okay. Okay. I need to step up my game now because they're doing this. So um, this has just been very enlightening. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jasenia, for sharing with that. And I understand a little bit about your nonprofit. So I am really, really excited that there's a new wind in okay. your nonprofit, given given how important it is to to all the teachers and and to our children and to this country and therefore to the yes. planet. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jusenia. Anybody else? Any other comments or questions? Well, I like the I like the um the last statement you made um about the the time frames and the dead putting actually, actually a time frame on, on things, because I know I find that I'm, I'm that kind of person. I, um, I quite often will say, Hey, you know, um, you know, when you get some time, Oh, uh, you know, can you, know, you think, you know, you think this is something you could, that you could handle. And I don't necessarily, you know, um, say, Hey, can you do this for me by such and such and such a time or would such and such and such a time work? Or with such and such other time work, like give an alternative, but I'll give time, but but state alternatives, and then let people tell you, you know. And so I find that, that that's something I need to do more because it's more like a, a call to action. You know, we can we can talk and talk and talk, and we can let people know things we want to do, but until you give a direct or uh, act for a specific call to action, quite often you, you won't get one. Yes, and and uh, Stan, this is what. We discovered, Stan, uh, and it's simple, yet it's a game changer. The deadline is what helps people grow, not what you ask them. What you ask them to do is just something else they're doing. But whenever there's a deadline, that's when you're truly exercising empowerment to another human being. Because 
organically their brain needs to look at everything they do and now they need to organize themselves and now they have a real promise in the world now you are really empowering them to grow absent of deadline it's very difficult that they'll grow in their lives. They. Very difficult, yeah. All right, Sorel, time flies. Time flies. <laughs> Thank God we have a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it is true. Time only flies when you have a deadline. <laughs> Without yeah. the deadline, hey. <laughs> yeah <laughs> good deal Gio well time does fly and it's time to wrap it up <laughs> awesome do you want me to wrap it up go ahead man awesome. wrap it up with another joke what's that wrap it up with another joke <laughs> another joke okay let me ask you this Stan yes yes sir <laughs> why couldn't the pony sing happy birthday <laughs> I don't even know. Let me hear this. Because I don't know. She was just a little horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I like that one, man. <laughs> They're terrible. All right. I really, truly wish you an unbelievable weekend. Hope you have a phenomenal weekend. Have a great time. And these are the seven, eight tenants to have an unbelievable weekend. Enjoy your life. Have a great body. Have a sexy skin. Grow your hair or be okay without the hair you are with. The first one is love. Love always. The second one, stress. Stress less. There's only one life. Really. You don't need anything in your life to have less stress. Just Stress less, it's only one life. Eat more plant-based. Get closer to the trees, hug the trees, eat the trees, laugh more, stretch your cheeks. It helps you with the wrinkles. Just laugh, exaggerate. It's okay. You're going to exaggerate about the drama you have. Might as well exaggerate about the laughter too, right? Stress, I mean, laugh, laugh more. Move, move every day, a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon. Make a time to make a walk. Walk every day, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon. It would save your life. Give, give everything you got. Give your jealousy away. Give your resentments away. Give your resources away. Give, give what you have. And I always forget one, Sorrel. Sleep. 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 Ah, get some sleep. <laughs> sleep. Sleep. Six, I say six hours. Sorrel says eight hours. Seven. At least seven. Sleep every day. And as Monica liked to say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Have a phenomenal weekend. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend, everyone. Yeah. See you on Stay Monday. Well, family. Take care now. One love, guys. One love. Good day, guys. Have a good weekend, Rashida. Do this.